Hi there, most people when they start off uh, with the Melodeon in the UK here start with a DG uh, machine, but this is a GC. So if you're starting off with one of these Melodeons, then this lesson is especially for you. I'm using the simple tune Silent Night, and this is a good way to uh, make a start on the instrument and find your way around it. Uh, it's a three, four pieces. That means you're counting one, two, three, one, two, three. It's a waltz, if you like. Um, on the GC Melodeon, this row is the G row because if you press the buttons and push the bellows in, you get uh, notes from the chord of G major. And on this row, this is the C row because if you push the bellows in and press the buttons, you get notes from the chord of C major. So we're in the key of C major uh, on this tune. So we're going to be using predominantly notes on the C row. That's the inside row here. Uh, the main difference between the G C melodeon and the D G is that it's a fifth lower, so it's a, a lower pitched instrument, and some would say a nicer sounding uh, instrument for it. Because on the D G we have a, quite a lot of notes up this end, the squeak end as we call it, that aren't particularly useful. Not so on this instrument. Um, this particular one is the third button start. We're going to deal with the both hands at the same time. So in the first bar on the right hand side, you're playing these notes here. You're playing G, A, G, and those notes are on button five, if you've got a third button start, which is fairly likely with a, with a G, C. You do get fourth button start G, C instruments, uh, but you know it's unlikely. But if you have, obviously, you've got a fourth button start, it would be a button below this one, okay? So button five, finger two. So I call this pause plus one, position plus one, because pause H, position home is here. So finger one on the root note of the, the row, which is C, third button. Finger two on button four. Uh, finger three on button five. And finger four on button six. But we're plus one, so we're down one from that. So, so this first note is G, button five, finger two. And you simply uh, press the button, push the bellows in slightly. And then pull the bellows out, still hanging on to that button. You don't have to repress it, and that's what that dagger symbol means. And then again, you push in again, and once again, of course, you don't have to uh, repress the button. So that went on to the next bar. Um, now, to put the left hand in here, you're going to play C bass, C chord. So C bass is the button right down the bottom here. Either use your little finger on that or your third finger if you feel comfortable with that. Uh, I try and use one finger per pair of bass buttons. So down here I use my little finger and I, that's for my C bass and I use my third finger on the C chord which is one above that. So there's my um, pa, pa. Um is on the C bass, pa is on the C chord, finger four, finger three or you might want to use finger three and finger two. I'd recommend trying to use four and three because long term it makes a lot of logical sense to use those fingers. Now, the slight problem here is that you've got to play the um with the uh, first right hand note. That's pretty easy. But then you've got to do the par, the first of the chords, before you play that second note, that A on the pull. Like that, see? And then the final par will be on the G note, which is on the push again. Like that, see? So. And on the second bar then, you come up uh, one button, so it's button number four, finger number one, and the note is E. So there's your first two bars. And you'll count that one, two, and three, one, two, three. In the first bar, that's a dotty crotchet. So a dotty crotchet, well a crotchet takes that one beat, the dot adds on half as much again, so that's one and a half beats. So you play that note for the whole of the count of one, and for half of the count of two, and then that second note, that quaver A, will come in on the end count of two. So it's one, two, and three. And the final note, that crotchet G, is, takes up the whole of B3. So you have one, two, and three. 
And you're probably saying, well, I know how silent night goes, so I don't really have to worry about the, the notes, but it might be interesting to see how the uh, sheet music adds up to what you know in your head. So, with your bass line, and that's your first bar, and then when you go to the second bar, you're gonna do your um pa pa again on your C, your C bass and your C chord twice. While you play the note of E, finger one, for me it's button four, and you play that note, hold it for three beats. It's a dotted minim, uh, it takes up three beats of the whole of that bar. Notice a couple of things here, how I'm not letting the bellows drift down, how I'm hardly moving the bellows when I'm uh, pushing or pulling. It's not a great yanking in and out. Tiny movements all you need. See, look, look at that. Hardly moves, isn't it? Bars three and four are exactly the same. I would suggest maybe bring the bellows out a little way before you start. Because obviously in those first four bars, there's a lot of pushing. So you could run out of bellows fairly quickly. So before you start, I should have said this earlier really, but bring the bellows out a fair way uh, to cope with all those push notes. Now, in bar five, we're staying nicely in position. So a little finger, if you let it fall onto the button, uh, that it falls onto naturally, which is button number uh, seven, this one here. And you pull the bellows out as you play this note, which is D, and it's held for two beats, it's a minim. And then you play the same note, still pulling uh, on beat three. So you've got minims, the first two beats, and crotch it is the third beat. So it's one, two, three, like that. Now the bass here is the same buttons you've just been playing for C bass C chord, but just pulling. So you have these two down here. So little finger and third finger if you can, or if you prefer it, third finger and second finger. Um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa. Bass note called, called, bass note called, called. And the right hand. There. So that's obviously pulled out quite a long way with two bars of pull, but then we've got two bars of push. It's your old friends, the C chord, C bass, C chord, um, pa, pa, twice. And your third finger falls nicely on the note C, which is probably button six, and you play that note, hold it for two beats, and then you play uh, the note again on the third beat of the bar, and then you're gonna come up to the G note, which is uh, button number five, finger two, that's where you started the tune, and that's a dotted minimum held for three beats. So bar seven and eight. So five and six, seven and eight, they're the same timing, just different notes. Five and six on the pull, seven and eight on the push. So that gives you... Don't be frightened to give the bellows a little bit of welly on the pull and on the push, um, because if you don't pull hard enough, you'll get a weak sound, sometimes both reeds uh, on this instrument, uh, particularly they don't fire properly. So, you know, I said you don't have to yank the bellows, but you do have to put a bit of pressure if you're pushing then obviously you push against the side of the melody and if you're pulling, then you're exerting pressure on the side of the bass strap. So, you know, don't be frightened of the instrument. You know, it is quite a loud, loud instrument, so you may have to choose your practicing times carefully. So you have this. Let's revise those first eight bars. So far we've only played two chords, we're going to go to a third chord now and the chord is F. Now these two buttons on the inside row at the bottom here, they give you F, bass and F, uh, F bass and F chord in both directions, on the pull and on the push. And finger two, we're still in the same position, we're still in this pause plus one position. Finger two is on the note A, which we have played before, we play it as a minimum and then as a crotchet. 
So played as a minim, it lasts while you play the um and the pa, and the final pa go, is played when you play that final A crotchet. Like that, see? Bar number 10, a little bit of a strange bar because you're going to do uh, an F bass on the push, an F chord on the push, and then an F chord on the pull. So you're going to go like that. Remember I said you get them on the push and the pull. So it's push, push, pull. Uh, so that's your um, pa, pa. The right hand is C, uh, finger three on the push. That's button number six. Same button, press down and pulled out, gives you the B. So you've got a little dagger symbol there, so that means you just hold onto the button. You don't have to, you can repress it if you prefer it. And then keep pulling out, come to the button above that, finger two, that's the A. So it gives you... Right, so nine and ten, bars nine and ten. Bars 11 and 12, first two bars of page two are the same as bars one and two. And then bars 13, 14, 15, 16 are the same as 9, 10 and 11 and 12. Right, now we uh, take a big movement down the uh, fingerboard. So bar number 17 is in the plus three position. So if finger two is there in the home position, if you go one, two, three, uh, because that's home, that's plus one, that's plus two, that's plus three. So if I put my finger here, it's actually button number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's finger two pulling out, so this is pause plus three. It's nice and easy to play, because you've got the D on the pull, uh, this note is D, okay, a minim, then a crotchet, same notes, and the bass line is your G bass, G chord, remember you played that in bars five and six? Stay in the position, and they're all next door neighbour notes here, you've got um, F, D, B, and they're next door neighbour buttons, fingers three, two and one in this position, and then finger one is on the note C, uh, which is an octave above the uh, kind of root note, if you like. And it's C bass. Uh, that C is a dotted minimum, held for three beats. And then you've got an E, which is a dotted minimum. That's the button below that, held for three beats. So bars 17, 18, 19, and 20. Then the last four bars, you're going to come back to what we call the uh, home position. So this is uh, where the first finger will fall nicely on the note C, which is the third button uh, of this row. But you're going to start with a little finger on actually button number six. Okay, so that is the note C, finger four, G, finger three, E, finger two. Now bar 22, a little bit tricky because for a start you've got to play the G basses in a different place. As you know, you get them down here on these two buttons on the pull. You also get them up here on the push. Okay, so it's outside row buttons one and two. So button two is the bass note and button one is the bass chord. And you're gonna play um pa pa on the push. Now, you'll notice that the middle right hand note is a pull note, so what you've got to do is this. When you play it, make sure you lift the bass off. And then you can then play the second pa as you play this note, which is the note D. Notice it's got a diamond head, and that tells you it's on the other row. It's on the G row. And it's uh, button number five, finger three. See? So that's quite a tricky bar for a beginner, but good practice. And the last two bars, very simple, this is the third page, it's the note C, it's the root note, if you like, of this row. It's button number three on this uh, melodeon, finger one, 
and that's a tied note, so it's played once, but it's held for six beats as you do two lots of um pa pa. So let's play the whole thing through for you. So there we are, it's a really good piece to play to start with, there's a couple of tricky bits in it uh, uh, for a beginner, uh, but that's all to the good, it'll get you right into the instrument, uh, and I really hope you enjoy this lesson.